Thank you very much uh, for having me. I'm not going to take much of your time because I know that we are running a bit late. Um, I also don't have a PowerPoint presentation. I just brought um, my two piece to, to this wonderful discourse. You've heard amazing um, um, articulations of how we could move around some sort of accountability framework um, that, that kind of sh maybe shifts the narrative a bit. And I thought I could also add um, some ideas in terms of um, how we could also shape this. I think one thing that we should always ask ourselves is, you know, what are we talking about? Are we talking about accountability or are we talking about commitment? And I think what we've heard from the pa panel is that we're moving towards commitment. How do we move towards commitment and how do we move towards um, collective responsiveness um, as, 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 a human, as a humanity? Because I, I was actually happy to see a bit more people in this room this year because at the last um, TB before AIDS conference, there was half the room. So it seems as though we are moving as the TV movement and we're getting more people. But still, we have quite a long way to go because even if you go out and speak to uh, HIV activists, they still don't see tuberculosis as a big issue. So there's this big elephant at the Rye. A very huge elephant, and I don't know how we're navigating this space or are we feeling comfortable, but we really need to do something about that animal, um, uh, that big elephant. So um, some questions that I had, and I think um, colleagues have, have answered some of them, is that, you know, what, what accountability frameworks do we have in place currently for tuberculosis? Are these really <laughs> working for us? And how could we use those, amend those, and, and, and move forward with uh, a different narrative? Then I thought to myself, even though we do have these frameworks, clearly something else is big, something else big is missing. If you think about it, currently we have around, um, you know, about 15 vaccines in the pipeline, TB vaccines. And I always imagine a world where we finally did have a TB vaccine, right? So there's this TB vaccine, it's available, get it, TB gone, okay? Kill the mummy in the BC before Christ. But hey, we can do this. So if people were requested to come to a healthcare facility or to a strategic point of sorts to register. And upon registration, you receive the vaccine and you'd be TB free. Would we get the masses coming, flourishing, coming to get this vaccine? Would we? If you think about it, the reality is no. We would not get this. We would not get the masses that we require and we would not be able to vaccinate people because as much as we, we plan ahead and we come up with amazing research and development and we come up with these new tools, we face the problem that Dr. Khan was mentioning earlier on this morning, right? Um, we're facing a lot of um, you know, economic, regulatory, as well as policy-based barriers, but also facing the people barriers. And those are the barriers that I think whatever we want to do going forward in tuberculosis, we need to consider. It takes a lot of work for a national TB program manager to see a Minister of Health. It takes a lot of work for a Minister of Health to convince a Minister of Finance that tuberculosis is an important area and that they should fund. So we don't have a multi-sectorial response at current point. We're talking to ourselves. Every, every time you hear TB, you hear, oh, but there's BCG. Or you hear, well, speak to the Department of Health. So we really definitely need a multi-sectoral response. And I don't know what sort of uh, mechanism we can put in place for that, but it's definitely something that we definitely do need in us to move it forward. The framework that we're talking about needs to be operationalized. We haven't thought how that's going to happen, because at the end of the day, we're talking bucks. Right? We're talking about interventions that need to be put in place to mobilize and move um, um, the, 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 the review, the monitoring, the indicators. All of that requires money. And we need to think about where are we going to get that money. An idea could be looking at what the HIV movement with financial transaction taxes. We did a lot of amazing work there. Yes, of course, there are problems now where we've now created um, national HIV funds, but that was a strong pull in terms of us getting investment away from traditional donors and outside of, of traditional avenues. So we need to think about that. I think it's important. Another realization is also the fact that we need to work within the human rights framework, but it shouldn't be displaced from development. Because at current point, we know that tuberculosis affects mostly vulnerable people. It affects poor people. It's a developmental concern, right? It's not a public health issue only. It's a development issue. But our discourse is always around articulating it in a very human rights-based response. Hey, this is my ride. Hey, I'm a patient. Hey, it's like, yeah, okay, the next person is also dying. What else is new? 
Do you understand? We need to basically come up with a value proposition as to why governments need to take this seriously. And this talks about investment. What is the return on investment if you put your money towards a certain product or uh, towards a certain intervention? Because right now, we really are removed from the SDGs. So by 2030, we're going to be sitting here in the same room, if some of us are alive, and we're going to be having the same conversation. We will not have reached the SDGs because we haven't thought of tuberculosis in that developmental mind frame. So I really would encourage us to start doing that, all of us in the room, because I know most of you, because we, we always see each other, um, yes, <laughs> my friends. <laughs> <laughs> so another thing that I wanted to just to think about was, you know how right now a lot of funders are um, transitioning and we're looking at sustainability and the envelopes being put in place, right? So Georgetown did a very amazing project where they basically put together health um, equity action plans because as we know, if tuberculosis is a developmental disease, then we need to address that, the social determinants. But how we, we address that is by having a plan in place. This, these action plans can be a way for us to say to governments, yes, we will fund you, but we need an equity envelope from your side. What are you putting in place to address your social determinants? What are you doing in place to, do, to address your, your developmental challenges? And I think Dr. Pele showed something from 2012. That's what they were talking about, sir, with the water and... That's what they were talking about. We definitely need that, otherwise we're really wasting time and we're funneling management of disease into nothing. It's gonna be the same boiling pit, um, I'm, I'm afraid, even by 2013. And maybe if we don't want to do that, right? If we're tired and we're saying, okay, we'll get there, but we still have a lot more conversations to go, then I encourage us to be really aggressive, right? There are so many beautiful things that are happening right now in TB. I've never seen such a thing. I think anybody else who worked in TB in the 60s would be very proud of all of you in the room. You're all heroes. Congratulations for the amazing work that you've done. Because at the current point, we literally have search, treat, and prevent in our midst. People, we have it. We really have it. We know what we must do. We must just prevent it. Prevention is better than cure. Prevention is better than management. Let us just prevent it. And search, treat, prevent is the way to do it, right? We definitely need to start scaling up interventions such as the zero TB cities. It's a lot of money, you know, high-end cost, but I promise you we will yield, invest, we will, uh, yield return on investment later. Differentiated service models, we will yield return on investment later when donors have, have shifted away. Also, we've got 3HP. Nobody wants IPT anymore. It's nine months. Who wants nine months on top of what you're already taking? I want three months. Oh, I want one HP. So yes, let us invest in operational research, as Dr. Khan said this morning. Let us do that, and let us see where that gets us, because that is bang for buck. That is bang for buck. That is what I told um, the PEPFA annual meeting um, yesterday. Yes, so, you know, 3HP may be 45 US dollars right now, but if we ranked up the numbers and we actually focused, we could get there. So let's get there. And just one last issue that I wanted to mention was the fact that unfortunately with HIV and with TB and with any disease, it's like you're going through the five stages of grief. Unfortunately, you don't start from A and end at ZU. Sometimes then it's depression, then you're, you're angry, then you think you, you're fine, contentment, but then you're back to angry and you know, and that's how it works because human nature, it's human psychology. Disease deals with psychology. And because we're dealing with psychology, we're not dealing with popping pills into a robot that takes the pills, that goes home, that gets cured. We're dealing with a much bigger problem and we need to understand this problem. But since we don't really understand it, because TB would not have killed the mummy and is still here, imagine, HIV superseded us, HCV, hepatitis C is superseding us in terms of activism, and we're still sitting here going, why are we learning from HIV? HIV was like in the 80s, people come on. Really, TB has been around that long. She's gorgeous. She's looking all kind of fancy, and now she's futuristic, and we're just being left behind. So let's really think about how do we start proactively putting things in place and measures that will start getting us there, because I don't think we've got till 20, 20, 2030. Some of us won't be here some more, but even by 2030, we'll still be sitting in this room having the same discourse. Hopefully, the room will be bigger, um, and there'll be more people in the room by then. Thanks. <laughs>